Now, reconsider this. The maker of images, the imitator, knows nothing of true existence, but only of appearances. Is that not so? Yes. Then let's not leave this explanation in the middle, but treat it fully. Proceed. Think of a representational painter who paints reins and a bridle. All right. But leather workers and metal workers actually make those things. Yes. But does the painter know the correct form of the bridle and the reins? Not even the maker would know that. Only the equestrian who knows how to use them knows of their true nature. Right. And does this hold true in general? What do you mean? I mean that there are three kinds of art. One that uses, one that creates, and one that imitates. I understand. So, the goodness, beauty, and rightness of every tool, every living being, and every action relate to their natural or practical use. True. So, the person who uses something has the greatest experience of it and tells the maker of that thing about the good or bad qualities that manifest themselves in using it. For example, a musician who plays the flute will tell the maker which flutes perform well and will suggest improvements. A good flute maker will respond accordingly. Of course. The user knows what is a good or bad flute. The maker trusts and follows the user's instructions. Yes. The tool is the same for both. But the maker believes what is good or bad by listening to the user who knows. Precisely. Now, what should we say about the imitator? Does the person who draws a flute know from using the flute whether the drawing is good and beautiful? Or will the instructions from others determine whether the drawing is correct? Neither. Then the imitator has neither knowledge nor correct opinion about what is good or bad about it. I suppose not. Are mimetic artists wise and educated about their creations? No, Socrates. Just the opposite. Yet, Glaucon. They continue to go about their work without knowledge and only imitate what appears to be good and bad and what looks beautiful to ignorant people. That's all. So, we agree that the imitator has no knowledge worth mentioning and that imitation is a kind of game without substance, especially when written in iambic or heroic verse and in tragic or epic form. That's true. Then can we conclude with certainty that imitation really is three times removed from reality? It is. And to which human power does imitation correspond? I don't understand your question. Mm. Let me put it this way. If you look at an object up close, it looks large. But when seen from a distance, it seems to be small. True. Again. An object that looks straight when out of the water appears crooked when immersed in water. Also, an object that appears convex becomes concave because of the different ways we see colors. Our mind is constantly plagued by such confusion. Illusory painting, juggling, and various kinds of magic tricks and clever devices impose that kind of deception and exploit this weakness in our nature. I agree. But measuring counting and weighing graciously come to our aid and what appears to be larger or smaller or full or heavy no longer deceives us but submits to calculation number and weight they provide a powerful antidote this must be the work of the reasoning and computing power of the soul no doubt and this is what measures and determines that some things are equal or that some are more or less than others. But doesn't this often contradict what appears to be? Yes. Didn't we already say that it is impossible to think contradictory ideas about the same thing at the same time? We did, and we were right when we said that. Then. The power of the soul that thinks according to measurement must be different from the power that thinks contrary to measurement. It must. And what measures and calculates is the best? Certainly. And what opposes them is inferior to it? That necessarily follows. That's what I had in mind.
when I said that imitation in all its forms, including painting and drawing, is far from truth. It associates with and is the companion and friend of what is remote from reason. It is neither sound nor true. Now I understand and I agree. Then imitation is an inferior breed that mates with an inferior breed and produces inferior offspring. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> an appropriate metaphor.